Deep, deep, deep. I'm just reading the terms and conditions before I agree to it. What are your thoughts? So this video is going to be stored in the cloud? <laughs> I guess so, yeah. It will be It will be stored in the cloud, but then I'll only use the audio. Data of privacy and where... You know, people don't even know how much data that is on them. <laughs> and... And what people can do with it. Yeah, so what are you going to do with my data? <laughs> Why do you look so tired right now? No, what I'm just a little today? nervous. I'm, I'm a little I'm a little camera shy, you know? I'm not That's a... cap. There's no way. <laughs> Seriously? No, what I did today was, you know, I went to work. Um, are you going in person now? Huh? Yeah. Are you going in person? I try to go most days. Hmm. I try to go at least, you know, three or four times a day, four times a week if it's not too bad of the weather. But, you know, again, like I said, this hybrid model sucks. Really? I, I, I think Apple came out with the statement that if you don't go in, like, you will be subject to layoffs. Like, they're what? tracking... They're tracking how many people are going you in. Like that. So you prefer going. full in person? I prefer that your team is expected to come to a central location on X Y Z days to promote a culture, to promote you know collaboration, the things that are more likely to happen when you're in person. For example. I'll give you an example. When I'm hitting someone up on Teams or on in work saying, hey, you know, you got a quick minute. Well, I don't know what they're doing. They can be on a walk. You know, they can be using the bathroom. They can be using, you know, they can be on a, their lunch break. No, that's right? Right. So that immediate, the immediate response, rather than if that person is sitting next to me at my office and I say, hey, I've got a quick question. You want to you wanna brainstorm this real quick? And your question or your solution gets it's uh answered or found immediately all right well here's my question for you if i was running my own company i would for sure by million multitude want it to be done in person but if it's someone else's company like who cares whether it does well or not like what is it to you whether your company performs well or not well i'm it's not about my the company it's also about promoting personal growth i do think there's some aspect of your social skills and your interactions deteriorating without face-to-face mm. -face contact and that's a skill as whether we like it or not is going to be needed throughout your lifetime there can't is you this metric here. Out, can't you develop that outside of work like what if you just went to a you know like when we went to that basketball game like what if you develop networking there? Why does it have to be done? Well, those are well, those are one-off instances. I'm talking about consistently on a five, seven-day schedule. Mm -hmm. Right, five days you're working, right, and then five of the, in that in those five days you're working usually, you know, working hours around nine to five. Okay, so the majority of your week is spent related to work activities, related to you know, even if you're at home doing it on your own, it, it's majority of the time is spent at or on work. So I think to promote foster, promote growth within the personal personal individual and the company, you need to have people come into the office. It's that old head energy. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not saying, no, I'm not yeah, saying, okay, I'm not, yeah. what I'm saying, I mean, look, if you got a team, right, no, 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 makes some, sense. but if you're an individual just working on your own, you know, whether it's research or, you know, tutoring, for example, like that doesn't involve collaboration. That's just you. You get up on the, you get up, you figure out your game plan for your, your student or, you know, your research that you're working on. And, and that's, that's between you and how you go about yeah. your day. You can be doing it in a public setting of a coffee shop. You can be doing it at home. The results are not going to change. I'm talking about, does the result change if you're in person versus remote? Mm. I think there are, 
um, there are possibilities that it does change. Mm. But if you're working for a startup, for example, you only got 50 people that are all across the world. Maybe, you know, and then the way you foster your your working schedule is that like everyone needs to be on this meeting. You know, everyone needs to have a say. You know, it's a cross collaborative culture that is already dignified because it's a startup. But if you're at a big company like Apple or the Googles of the world, like how do you instill that type of culture of cross collaborations, whether it's remote or hybrid or in person? You know, it, I think it's more effective if you have a bigger company and it's going to be easier to do when you're everyone's in person. I don't know. Those are just my thoughts, especially for a young professional. Yeah, I mean, you probably get a lot of your social interaction at work, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's where, you know, there's a graph that says, like, in your 20s, you're supposed to be, like, having the most social interaction of your life your 20s to your early 30s and then after your mid 30s there starts to be like a drastic decline of how many hours a day you spend in social interaction because you obviously have kids you, you know you grow older um i see that within my cousin she's got a two year she got two kids you know a nine and 12 year old and a majority of her time is spent with her family. She just complains about the like I don't get any adult interaction. But you know, your your point is right. Like you should be seeking out those social interactions on your own. But if we're working and that's what our most of our time is being spent, then I just would expect that social interaction to be filled there. Yeah, I think it takes you a lot of creativity. Classroom. It takes yeah, a lot of creativity to like yeah. build whatever it is that you're seeking for in your life, like not in the conventional ways. Yeah. But social interaction is a huge one. I feel like, but it is, I mean, even as you were saying, it's like, damn, like the fact that you're probably going to be working five days a week for, you know, four decades is actually quite, it's, it's actually quite mind blowing. <laughs> it's insane. Well, I mean, that yeah it's a grind it's it's you know that's capital capitalistic society that's america for you the grind the, the hustle mentality is something that's been ingrained into our society and i don't know if it's the right thing or the wrong thing there's no right answer to that but that is the culture here if you go to europe i mean you saw it very relaxed people take siestas people enjoy their time and their you know they, they enjoy their food they enjoy their night evenings here it's like work okay you gotta be you gotta be the best at your work then you want to work on your body then you want to go to yoga then you want to be a health nut yeah. like every little thing is something like for you're striving to be better and better and better at it's like you're a hamster in a hamster wheel i really think it it also differentiates in this country from city to city and i feel like living in the bay i mean every time i even step into the bay for like 10 minutes i feel like that that is a billion times compounded in that particular area more than most other places except maybe I agree new york i agree with you i mean i'm from san Obispo, san Obispo, very relaxed city in the town you know people usually go there after the 30s mid 30s and move back there raise kids and just want a chill and happy lifestyle. You know, they want to, they don't want to be stuck in traffic all day. They don't want to be working all day. They want to enjoy nature. They want to go on hikes on the weekends. Like they want to do the small things that, you know, makes their life fulfilling. Yeah. It does depend on city to city. What's the balance you kind of want to create in your life? I think I'm still trying to figure that out. You know, if I think about the last two years, the pandemic, you know, 20, like when we went to Hawaii for the month and then maybe two years from that point forward, I think I was like kind of, you know, not so uh, ingrained in the hustle culture. 
you know, I was, I was enjoying my work and I was, um, just did I also enjoyed traveling a lot like I was traveling a shit ton you know going you know living in Hawaii going to Mexico City going to Cancun going to you know Austin um going to LA going to all these different places like I think I traveled just a lot because of the pandemic because nothing was really open and now I'm kind of shifting into like the more work mentality and hunkering down. I think there's there's like phases you go through in life. Like right now, the macro environment kind of also affects your psyche. It's like, okay, what's going to happen tomorrow at work? What's going to happen to the economy? What's going to happen to people's jobs? You know, are we going to keep saying layoffs after layoffs? Like you internally don't feel right to make that conscious decision. Like, hey, I want to go travel. I want to go, you know, spend money on this item that I've been wanting. You feel a lot more conservative based on macro and uh, macro environments and micro environments, like what's going on in your actual day-to-day -day job, right? I think one person told me right now is like, it's job preservation versus job growth or job, you know, like there's more supply in the market then there is demand. Um, we're seeing a lot of hiring freezes, but the balance, I think it, it's like, it's variable. I don't think there's ever going to be a balance. It's whatever right now is, is, um, is working for you. Definitely. I got to unplug from work sometimes, yeah, but like at I'm the same time, Indian uncle right now, bro. <laughs> macroeconomics all the job market oh my god are you in your 20s or 50s what is going on I, dude i literally sometimes think i'm in my 40s bro but what is going on <laughs> sometimes, sometimes i feel like i'm in my 40s bro that's crazy what are you 26 i'm 25 bro you're a little baby in this world bro damn that's crazy to me no, I mean, I'm not opposed to taking a risk. It's not that you know, I've taken risk. I've I took a risk. You know, I moved to a different city. I lived in Hawaii. I've done. I've taken risk. I mean, obviously, the amount of risk I've taken in the last year has been drastically reduced since the first two years I've been out of college. But that's like a progression in life because it's not about oh, let me try this new thing that I haven't done. It's like you've done that thing that. You know, I've traveled multiple places, but maybe I have to shift my outlook or what I'm looking for when I go traveling now, right? But that I have to do that due diligence and research, right? Right now, if I were to go travel somewhere, it's more about, hey, let me unplug from work. When we go to Austin, my mentality is not about, un it's one is about unplugging from work, but it's more about, you know, experiencing a new thing, going on a road trip, with one of my closest friends and, you know, driving from Austin to the West coast, never done that before. It's going to be rocky. There's going to be rock. There's going to be highs. There's going to be lows, but ultimately it's just experiencing something different. So that's a risk I take. You take risk in different factors. Yeah. So what about the Lakers? You know, AD might be the – he might be the weirdest player I've ever, <laughs> like, just watched. Like, one day he's on, one day he's off. Like, I don't know what kind of makes him go, but it's frustrating watching him. Like, yesterday we should have won that game, bro. You got LeBron you, back. That is sad that we lost. We got LeBron back. We got, we got you know, Caruso coming into town. We got Pat Bev coming into town. AD only has 15 points. Are you kidding me? And Vucic Vucevic was out the second half. He got ejected. Really? Yeah. Hey, why? I don't know. He threw like an elbow or something. Complained oh, about the ref. Crazy. That's nuts. I don't know how they lost. <laughs> if you th if you talk about retiring your jersey when you were you know what sorry you talking about that? Yeah, after Pau Gasol got his jersey retired. When you talk about these things, what did he say? Well, you got. 
He's like, I want to get my jersey. Hopefully, I get my jersey retired mm-hmm. like Pau Gasol one day. Like, they, if he's saying these things, these are the expectations that you have to meet. If you don't meet them, then you're a bum. There's only one championship behind Pau Gasol. Yeah, but the talent, look at the talent level versus Pau. You're looking at a guy that's at, can average 40 and 15 in his sleep. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, know for sure. I don't know how, they're not, how they how they haven't been winning. I don't. They're good now. I think maybe when D'Angelo Russell gets back, I think when I think He's, he doesn't have that Kobe, you know, mentality. Like you know, I'm gonna go out. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, not every again. That's tough. But he's bad. Like, though. He's definitely, huh? <laughs> He's not that good. I don't know. He's not bad, but I don't know why he doesn't do. He's not more consistent. How do you drop fifteen one night and then drop like thirty two nights in a row? That's what I'm yeah. saying. You know, one time my uh, my cousins were like, "Oh yeah, dude, if, if Reeves and Schroeder and D'Lo they all chip in twenty points, and AD only has eight against uh, who'd they beat? They beat someone where he just had eight points and they still won." And everyone was like gassing the whole t- the Laker team up, and I was like, "Bro, it don't matter what Reeves, D'Lo, and Shooter give us. If AD does not give us thirty and ten every single night, we are not winning the chip. Point blank. Point blank. No, I don't know about thirty and ten, really. Yeah, you at least twenty five. Yeah, give me twenty five. Give me LeBron's twenty five, and then call it a day. Yeah. No, I really hope they win this year. What's up with you, though? How is, you know, I think you are the one that's taking the biggest risk in life that I know of personally. And your ability to do that consistently without shying away from, I just, I feel like you don't really focus on the end result. You just kind of do it and see what happens. But do you ever, like, look back and say, oh, you know, if I made this decision, you know, maybe it would have gone this way, like, or do you just kind of just do it and see what happens in the next? Like you don't want to repeat the same mistake over and over. Yeah, I I don't know. I mean, I think we can sometimes fall into a trap of taking life too seriously. Yeah, that's sort of my um, sort of one closest one close person told me is like, yeah, you know, you take life too seriously, and I I told that person I was like, look, you need you need to tell me to snap out of it. Because I know I take life too seriously. I know Rome was not built in a day, two days, you know. But it's like this striving for greatness type of mentality. Like you want it, yeah. but that's it. but it's not going to happen overnight. But, you know, but I mean, like, I think it's also in a deeper sense of the fact that, like, and I think this can sometimes be hard in, the, in especially in this culture that it just doesn't matter. So what matters? Like, Nothing. So it's like really setting a goal that like gives some sort of intrinsic value, I think is like the most important thing. Like, what is it that genuinely you want? Which I feel most of the times is never what we conventionally say what people want. Like conventionally, if you say, I want the big house, the big car, I want the beautiful life, whatever it is, those are all things that give value socially so someone else is going to be like wow great job like you have a big house awesome like the approval or the validation is what people are chasing but i i don't know i just feel like that's not what we intrinsically but can we change want. society no we can't i'm saying we but i'm saying we, in, we we i don't think anyone intrinsically wants that and i think that's something i'm noticing that like anyone who loves you because you're wealthy for example doesn't really love you Anyone who loves you because you're accomplished doesn't. So if it's like what we're seeking is like love, for example, it's very evident that no matter how successful we are, we're not going to get that love anymore. I mean, it's very obvious and evident if you just a lot of I feel like people who've reached high heights have talked about that. Of just like no matter how wealthy you are, if what you're seeking is like human intimacy, you're not going to get that. And so it's like I feel like I have found. For example, something I really care about is working on this education reform stuff. And like, as long as I'm working on that every day, no matter what, to what extent it is, I would like to do the absolute best I can throughout my lifetime. It's like, I feel to some extent content. But 
And then, so as I do these things, I'm just like, all right, let me see what comes. Let me see what arises. It's, I just think that everyone has like such a strict, like this needs to happen, that needs to happen, that needs to happen, but they're all for somebody else. They're, it's not really for them. Like they don't really care about those things most of the time. So it's like the only yeah, way you could, the only way you can really figure out what you want is if you're able to like separate yourself from all of those people, all those communities, and isolate yourself for a little bit and be alone for a little bit to where you can think for yourself. I feel like most people can't even really be alone to where they can start to think about what they want. They're just constantly under the guise of what others want or what others they think others will give them love for. I don't know, you know, what do you think? No, I mean that's a great point. I think unplugging yourself from how society thinks and what what they think is best for you is is the first step. But you know, when you grow up, right, you grow up with your parents telling you, okay, this is the right way to do things. This is the wrong way to do things. This is the way, you know, you should be focusing on academics because you know, that's going to create you to get you to better education, and that and better education will provide you a source of income, right? These things are kind of instilled within your upbringing, right? That's especially in different communities. If you look at, you know, obviously the Indian community, like education and and making sure like family are like the first two things that are like the pillars of how a, you know, an individual is defined, right? Like, and in your background, Right? Did you go to a good school? Do you have a good family? Like those are all things that kind of tie into your identity. And then when you get out of college or when you go to college actually, and you're on your own, that's like you're kind of like a little kid in an amusement park running around by yourself, lost. And you're looking for your parents, but you're also like intrigued by the fact that oh my god I'm getting I'm able my I'm able to run around in this world and experience it on my own but having the fear that if I don't figure it out then I have to figure out where to find my parents and my parents bring me back to you know my my roots for example but those roots may not necessarily be the things that you want right and so I think it's like that push and pull constantly that, you know, you want to be an individual on your own. You want to do things on your own. You want to build whatever life that is for yourself on your own. But at the same time, you keep in the back of your head that is this the right thing because of the values and the things that your parents in like ingrained in you as a kid. So it's that constant push and pull, especially like first generation kids. I think like that's like the hardest battle that you know kids like that that these that this generation goes through because you know you can take that step and leap of faith and go off and do your own thing, but it's that fear of failure that you have to get past like if I don't succeed or whatever it is in what life I want to build, right then i I have no option but to turn back, so I think that's like you have to jump over to that next bridge and say, you know what, whatever happens, it's meant to be, you got to try it out. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that leap of faith is scary, but I have found that it's not, it doesn't happen in one day, you know, it's like, and that's something I'm realizing, like, as I'm getting older and older and like, as I hear people who talk about things they've done their whole lifetime, it's like, I mean, what you said, Rome really isn't built in a day. And so it's like to develop that level of courage, I feel like takes so long. Like I had two weeks, a couple weeks ago where I didn't do anything. I was just like, man, I'm just going to lay down. And like, because it was spring break and I just didn't do anything. It was crazy how much those two weeks just threw me off. Like I had just a good, like I had a good thing going and I just was completely thrown off after those two weeks. And it's like, there really is something to say about inertia and how that if you every day, for example, try something that scares you and allow for yourself to experience one thing completely random, like in a year, think about that's 365 things that you would never have experienced. And your mind would just be working in a different way. And that's not a lot. That's one thing. Like what I did for a whole year is every time my brain said, you're afraid, don't do it, I would go do it. And then it just got, and I, but I feel like I need to do that again because I've lost that skill of like, you know rejection like not being afraid of you know, if i see a pretty girl like why be afraid just go say hi like 
you know, we, we talked about that in Mexico City, but it just, I think that's something that's so important of just like losing that fear of re like failure, rejection, and also redefining what failure looks like. I mean, to you, what does failure look like to you? Man, that's a loaded question, man. <laughs> failure. Um, I think failure is like probably for me, like looking at like probably like I didn't try my best in whatever aspect of it is, like relationship, work, and you know, family, anything like traveling or just really just ask myself like did I really try my best to make it happen to succeed or give my give myself the best chance to succeed and whatever that is I think that's what it comes down to and time and time again sometimes like when I go work out for example like did I give it my best mm -hmm. shot to work out right because mm -hmm. like I don't want to leave that workout second guessing myself like damn like did I really um, but I really try my best. And the second thing of failure is like painting a different story to yourself or, you know, telling yourself a different thing or narrating it in a way that makes you feel better. Um, it, it, that can be a really, really bad trap to fall into. And I've seen myself sometimes do that. Like when I go work out and then, you know, I didn't try my best, you know, so I feel like, okay, I, I but then I try to retell myself the story like, Oh, well, you know, I just worked out two days ago. Like, I wanted to take it easy today. Um, I should have, you know, I, I, I shouldn't be so hard on myself. Those type of things, like, that that builds cracks in the foundation. Mm -hmm. Because you're going, to doing, you're going to do that activity. You know that for you, like, giving your best shot or having a good workout is going to make you feel better, but you don't. And then you come back and say, damn, I should have tried harder. But let me just revise my story that I'm telling myself to say, hey, I don't want to go about, you know, breaking my breaking my arm or injuring myself. So I didn't try that hard. So I think failure is like two components. One is like you can't like for me, it's like I want to make sure I try my hardest and my best and my whatever activity I do. And then the second is like, how do I paint that story to myself? And, you know, that I think that's a component of failure. Like you can't do that. You can't. You got to be real with yourself. You got like that's like the hardest thing. You gotta like look yourself in the mirror and you gotta just Damn. break it down. I mean, one thing is like I I feel like when you do break it down, like there's always flaws to be pointed out, yeah. right? We can always do better always. on the. We can always do better and better and better. But like you gotta be real with yourself. Like okay, yeah, you could have done better, but look at how far you've gone. Mm. It's like that image, right? I think there's like an image where some guy is like walking up the steps but no one sees the amount of steps he walked up but he just sees the top and you got to realize like it took you know 500 steps to get to the top so don't just look at that one step that you took look at all the cumul cumulate accumulation of steps you took mm. to get there like that hike we went on in hawaii like we didn't know when it was going to end and i've had oh, like some man, that hike was crazy oh i forgot about that god so, damn you know I, and at some points of the hike, we're like, damn, this is not worth it. Like, we got to go back. Like, it's raining hard. Like, there's no point. What, you know, what's the end result going to look like? But then until we got to the end, then we really saw what it was all worth. No picture can describe what we saw. You know? Yeah. Because I, I mean, think. The scuba the, diving, I think, too. Yeah, even the scuba diving, right? Like, we were expecting to see a bunch of fish, like, you know, sea turtles and, and sea animals right our expectation was that we we're just going to jump in and we're going to see that and everything's going to be fine but like the first step to get into there was like halfway through the anchor you know doing all the breathing exercises coming out puking and getting back into the thing and, and getting That's going all crazy. the way down and 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 you know i i, I like touch a sea urchin but we didn't know any of that that was going to come uh like no one no one prepped us for that yeah. So, Dude, I think that yeah. trip honestly really like primed my mind for redefining failure for sure. I mean, we, that was the first thing I've ever done in my life where I think I just like 
said, I have no idea what's going to happen. Let's see what turns out. And that was a, one of the most beautiful experiences oh. of my life. Like, why well, was sick? That yeah, trip definitely changed more, my life. There's going to be more and more challenges to take. Yeah. To Austin and, you know, where else, wherever else we Did travel you get your to. Ticket? Um, yeah, I'm gonna buy it. <laughs> Are you about to? Why are you tripping, what? bro? You bro, I got four hundred dollar. Yeah, I got four hundred dollar credit. It's only one way. Yeah. How much does it take to fill up your gas tank? Like forty. Yeah. At least gas is cheap in uh Texas. Yeah, it's gonna be cheap for a while. Um. But that's going to be a cool trip. I mean, I feel like we've done a few cool trips now. We've done Hawaii, we did Mexico, we did D.C., and now we're doing the road trip. I don't know, man. It's going to, it's going to change the way. I mean, what are you looking for in a trip? Who are you going to go in the first first half? I'm doing the first half alone. Oh, you are? Yeah. Um, when are you coming back? Hmm? When are we coming back? I think on the 4th. Okay. For one week. Yeah. Did you map it out? Yeah, so Umar, we're going to stay with Umar for uh, two days. He lives in Utah. Oh, he's in U- oh, yeah, because he's got med school, right? Yeah. And then uh, my homegirl, Aditi, is going to come with us when in Austin. She's going to kick it with us the first day. And then the rest is just us. We got Grand Canyon, Vegas, possibly, um, Zion. It's about to be sick. You backpacking it? I'm about to, yeah, I'm about to get a tent and move into the woods on Monday. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh my God, we're on Wi Fi. Uh, I mean, I'll just work when I just go there when I'm about to sleep, like at night, like in like in evening. It'll make me wake up early. I'll try to sleep by like nine. You really have you have you watched Last of Us? Last of Us, no. You should watch it. So it's the show about it's based on a game. Basically, um, there's like a huge, huge like pandemic, um, that basically this fungus turns these humans into zombies mm-hmm. and but they're not like zombie zombies they're like you know it's just like this this fungus is controlling their brain and they start eating people and you know once you get bit you get infected and then you turn into one of them mm-hmm. so this happens all across the world like the whole world diminishes like you know into like 2030s 2040s and you know it's a story about this guy trying to like survive and make ends meet and makes you know takes his girl on with him this little daughter his little girl and basically starts taking care of her um but it's just like kind of thought thought maybe think of what you're doing i mean obviously not to that extreme we're just camping but you know living really in that kind of old school civilization with just uh, you know in the trees in the woods with a fire in a campsite and, and calling it a day you know, I really think there's something thing. beautiful to that, but but I mean, I, one thing I never want to get, one thing I never want to lose is, I mean, I think advancement in society and civilization in general. I think the best part is the amount of safety we have and the insane healthcare that we also have. Like for those two reasons, are we I safe? Think, are, are are do you feel safe? Yeah, do you feel oh, safe yeah. when someone? When these kids are getting shot up at another school, I, dude, I feel today. so ridiculously safe. Like, and I live like in some sus ass neighborhoods. I mean, you live in SF, which is also pretty sus. Yeah, well, what do you consider safe? Do you consider safe by walking down the street and not getting, you know, obviously executed, or do you consider safe like, hey, walking down the street and interacting with people and not having a judgment? thinking that they're going to hurt you for an illicit way. I mean, That's both. where I, I mean, think you can easily talk to it's the chances are low. Like 
and and in the sense in the sense of I, I can you talk I, to I a do... stranger on the street? Will you talk to a stranger on the street that has a gun? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I would, but I mean, depends on you how would? they're holding it. Like, if it's in Texas and everyone's holding a gun, yeah, like why not? I honestly think the amount of people who just pull out their gun and shoot you just because like you disagree on something is are not the same people who are actually like people who are actually getting shot. But I also think it's person to person basis. I feel like I'm a relatively disarming person. Like people aren't looking at me going, oh no, I need to square up with it. You know? Yeah, that's true. But I have found, I mean, I know DC is a pretty crime ridden city and I've lived in some pretty. My friend's moving there right now. He might make a new friend before you before you move out. Yeah. But you know, I just I do think like I do feel very safe in this country. Yeah, and relative, like when you compare it, I'm talking about in a vacuum. No, but I'm saying how I feel. Like I actually feel safe. I feel safe to like, yeah, hello. Yeah. Like I feel safe to communicate my ideas. I feel safe to like say what I think, and I feel like that in itself is quite a crazy thing to do. Like I feel like if if what you consume are like the crime shows and then you consume a whole bunch of news, the world can seem a lot more daunting than at least in my experience is. I don't Mm, think... That's a good topic to transition over to information loop, the feedback loop. Yeah. I mean, for example, there's been like three shootings recently in Georgetown. Oh, shit, really? But the only way I consume that information is because we got notifications. Yeah. And so it, there is something to say of like, look, if when all of this stuff is happening, how is it that you haven't seen any of it? I mean, and, and it's, I'm not saying that under like you should base your entire experience of reality on your own experience, on just your own experience. But what I'm saying is, is like, we shouldn't just put 100% of our beliefs into what we see on the internet. We should like take our own experiences into some weight. And so in my experience, I need to take that into consideration I haven't been shot. And so I'm not going to walk around the world thinking everyone's just getting shot up because it has not happened to me. And I think that there is some value to judging the world based on your experiences as well. And so when my experiences change, then my worldview will also change. But as of right now, I haven't been in a situation where I got shot or someone near me got shot. So I'm not going to travel the world as if, you know, it doesn't make sense for me to just see it on the internet and then be like, oh my God, it's happening everywhere, but it's not happening to me. So why why should I, why does it make more sense for me to buy what's on the internet than what is in my actual life? That doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, I think the problem with that is like the uncertainty. Like if I look back at my personal experiences for right when the pandemic started, me being immune compromised, you know, the research was saying that, oh, you know, if you're immune compromised, you shouldn't go out. I think you're more susceptible to, to like, you know, worser conditions with COVID. And then eventually I got COVID and I didn't have that bad of symptoms. I I had the usual symptoms that, <laughs> that anyone has. And it goes back to your point, like, why was I so scared? Why were we all so scared? saying COVID wasn't a serious issue. I'm just saying that, you know, as a society, we kind of, because of the uncertainty of this thing, we really, really took a risk adverse approach, which is fine, which is probably maybe the best thing for society, but maybe there was more room for taking a more, a lot more risk. Yeah. Uh, each in, Yeah, that's a good point. And each individual kind of, I mean, we went to Hawaii Yeah, we went to Hawaii and we took that kind of risk. Yeah, I mean, there could have been more possibility that I was going to transmit COVID to you guys and you guys were tripping about that. So that's a different topic for you. But let's get back to this topic of information flows where you're saying that, you know, if I didn't, if I don't consume media and the way and what I read on the news and, you know, what I see, that really has an impact of how you think. And I think that's true. I think nowadays, because there's so information, there's, there's so many new creators and there's so many outlets and platforms where you can consume this information. It's on you as an individual to kind of go back to the same point that we were talking about is like, what do you want your life to be about? What do you want your information flow and feed to be about? 
Do you want to watch funny things on your feed? Do you want to do you want to learn about the news? Do you want to learn about business? Do you want to learn about philosophy? There's so many different types of information out there that's at the fingertips of of your reach, you know, with the one search click away. And now it's even easier with AI and chat GPT on planning a different trip. It's like you, on you as the consumer, a hone is to create a flow of information that you want on a day-to-day -day basis. Because these, these, you know, these social platforms and these news outlets, like, they're going to they're going to choose the best thing for the majority of the people because that click that allows for more clicks and attrition and and coming back to this application but it's on you to really personalize what you want to see and what you want to learn about and that's again goes back to the thing about you know stepping away from a mint from society and saying okay what do i want to learn about and consume on a day-to-day -day basis and read about so what do you want to learn about? There's moment. There's moments in my time a year ago, year and a half ago, where I was really, really into crypto. So I signed up for all these newsletters. These I subscribed to all these you know information flows that gave me crypto news and you know information about how the technology works and just day to day stuff. And now that I look back, I'm like, damn, I don't really have any in not interest but enjoyment reading these things on a day to day basis. Right. So it's on me to figure out what I want to learn about. I like to learn. I want to watch more funny things. I feel like that hasn't been exposed to me as much in my information sources. Uh, I do want to keep up with the world and learn about what's going on with the world. I do want to learn about, you know, real estate. I want to learn about philosophy. Those things that you were sending, like quotes and taking time to read those quotes. But the, the problem is, is that you get tired of the same and same same type of content every single day, right? You get what I'm saying? Yeah. I consume a lot of nonsense. Yeah. But like NBA, for video. example. NBA is so much nonsense. NBA is just continuously on your feed, like, oh, highlights here, talk yeah, shows yeah. about this. Like, you know, it's you endless, just click on it. Sports because is endless. It's an endless numbing device. It's a numbing device. It's an easy reach to kind of shut off your brain like that. That type of information is just, again, that's the easier fingertips plus the recommendations. They just can non like continuously just can just keep popping up on your YouTube feed. I want to learn more about music. I want to sit down like how I, but the problem with music is that if I would go listen to a song and I don't like it in the first 13 seconds, I end up going to the same song that I like for the last mm. year. Well said. You know? Yeah, 100%. Like, when you find a new song that you really like, man, that's one of the best feelings in the world. Because you're just like, damn, like, I sat through this song, I enjoyed every single minute of it, and I want to play this song on repeat until I get tired of it. You know what song is stuck in my head right now? What? The boy's a liar. The boy's a liar. Da -da -da. Come here. Let me go ahead and add it to my liked songs. Have you heard that song? Yeah. You heard, you've heard it, right? Mm-hmm. I Spice? Yeah, that boy's a cat. No, 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 no. That song is stuck in my head. I love you. Where do you think um AI is going to take this world? Where do you Where do you think the use cases are? What's the biggest use case you see with AI? Over my pay grade, pay grade, bro. I don't know. I don't, I honestly, I can't, you know, someone was talking about, I heard this like a really cool quote, but I was like, I think what we really need to question, like what are in each individual's life, what are true problems are? Like, what are the real problems in my life? I can tell you this. the real problems in my life. I feel is I don't have a, a lot of like really meaningful human relationships. So, you know, when Mirage came here, for example, that was beautiful. I don't have a lot of friendships like I have with Mirage in my day to day. I consume a lot of nonsense. And I would say perhaps I'm not as healthy as I'm not in that shape as much as I would like. I don't think there's a single one of my problems that can be fixed with more technology. That's not saying that other people's issues could not be solved. I'm just saying there is not a single issue in my life 
that can be solved with more technology. And so for me, well, every tech I have right now is more than enough for me. I don't think I need more tech in my life. I'll give you a solution to the problem too with AI. Wait, I'll say is one thing. One place my life could be better is I would like to decrease the chance of dying by a car accident. And so any <laughs> advancement that could happen in reducing that chance, I'm so pro. But in terms of like all the other things, like I think I'm good. Like for in my personal life, I think I personally don't need more technological advancement to improve my life. It's all mental and the other like philosophical things. So I don't know how AI is going to change my life. I don't think it will. I I know how it will. Mm. Your problem number two, nonsense, right? You're consumed with too much nonsense information. I think there needs to be a check-in period, periodically, with the person in front of the screen and saying, hey, do you want to shift your nonsense information that you're getting to some of the things that you've searched up in a one one to two times basis, but not as often, but you're interested in it. Do you want to shift the information there? Like a gradual, I'm talking about a gradual from nonsense to sense information, if that makes sense. But is there ever sense information? Like, I think the concept of it, the, I, I think the point is, is that information in itself being consumed, in my opinion, is a to some extent is a waste of time. Like, I think we really need to focus on the creation. No matter how much you're consuming, whether you're reading 10,000 books, whether you're reading consumption, I think to some extent, so let's say it's not about pleasure. Let's say it's actually about learning. If it's about pleasure, then, you know, full sense. But let's say it's about learning. Even if you're reading 10,000 books, I think that doesn't- The application it, needs to be there. It, yeah, it doesn't ingrain that knowledge like writing one book. Like, it's just- even if you have the perfect AI to put all the, you know, right content, I mean, even if you consume enough political content, real estate content, whatever it is that you want to consume, it's like, dude, like, even that gets kind of What's the application? Yeah, I mean, cons consumption of information there? is, I, just go outside your house. Just watch, a, like, I was like, I was spent like 20 minutes watching a dove just try to eat food inside of a water bottle. And I just watched it for 20 minutes. And that, it's, I remember it. I can't tell you what I learned in my, you know, all the classes I've taken, but I can tell you what that bird was doing for 20 minutes with that bottle. Cause it was like, if you want to learn, just go out into the world and just watch people, watch animals, watch the cars, and you'll learn. You don't have to like read an article that has big words in it, is what I think. I think the world is the best teaching thing. Just go outside the house. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you there. It's like, do people want to do that, though? Yeah, I mean, that's a different question. But I you know, have the like, world to be the best teacher. Like, just any time I step out the house, I learn, like, 30 things. What's something that you learned today? Today, I had a really interesting day. So, I worked on this essay the whole day on affirmative action. So, I learned a lot of things from writing that. Um, I use chat GPT to like revise it. Um, <laughs> I found some shortcomings with it. It like, it misses the point sometimes. It, uh, it does a good job of kind of like rephrasing things, but since it doesn't really understand the, the, the meat of what you're saying, it can sometimes skip out important parts of what you're saying. So you have to okay. definitely be like, you have to be the mastermind of chat GPT. It can't like replace you uh, as of right now. Um, and then I went to a coffee shop all day and then came home, worked out. And then I, but I had some interesting conversations. But yeah, your question is, what did I learn today? Yeah, give me your top three. I mean, but I'm trying to think what I learned from the world because I learned, I, mean, I can tell you what I learned from reading, but I don't want to tell you that. Uh, see, that's a good question though. I had an interesting conversation with my friend Aditi. We were just talking, we were having a similar conversation to what we're having now, which is, where are you? Um, are, you are you trolling me? You know what? Uh, what are you doing right now, bro? 
<laughs> keep keep speaking, dude. What are you doing right now, bro? Don't worry about it. Have you been uh, cleaning? Have you been cleaning it or no? Is there, is there anything on it right now? What? Is it, you know nope. what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know what you're talking about. There's nothing on it. Really? He's speaking, yeah. <laughs> I can't believe you're doing this, bro. You're trolling me so hard. This is what are you going to do, hold him in? No, this is unheard of, bro. This is the first time in podcast history has this ever happened. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I'm being trolled. This is so funny. <laughs> is this not in the etiquette? No. <laughs> you know, someone on your other podcast hasn't done this before. This you don't have them social, on camera. This is a social faux pas, bro. Huh? This is a social faux pas. You're not allowed to be doing this, bro. You can scrap it. You can cut it out. No, All right, let's I'm get gonna, back. I'm going to increase the volume on this section. Fuck off. Only on your side. Um, well, Aditi and I were talking just about, you know, the relationships between child and parent, what the responsibilities are as a child to the parent. Uh, that was an interesting conversation. As a child to the parent? Yeah. There and, are none. Uh, yeah, I mean, it depends on what you think, but yeah. But, you know, she, I don't know, it's, it's cool. One thing that's cool about growing up in the Bay Area is I feel like I'm around a lot of really thoughtful people. I feel like a lot of, I mean, you probably feel this going to Berkeley as well, just like the people that you meet there. But I, I really feel like a lot of the people in my life are very thoughtful. And so I learned a lot through just talking to them. What about you? What did you learn today? Um, I learned that I got to sit with myself a lot more by myself so I can think like without my phone. I sat in the sauna for like 15 minutes and just sat there by myself. Nice. And it just felt really, really good. Um, I learned that I need, I learned that I just need to get up out of the bed and get, get my day started and go to work. Uh, I knew that I need an ample amount of sleep because I felt kind of tired today. Um, yeah, those are some of the things I learned about myself. And I learned that you know, all the rules or responsibilities you take on, you know, don't complain about them and just, just do them, you know, just, just do them. And because there's, you know, it's just wasted energy if you're complaining about something that you want to change and it's not going to happen overnight. So why complain about it and just, you know, put your head down and go to work or try to make the best of the situation um, yeah, that's like kind of the thing, right? Make the best of the current situation that you're in. Uh, but that's, that's a ongoing thing that I have to, you know, combat. The shooting in Nashville just kind of, again, it broke my heart. I just, I just wish that, you know, you just don't really see this happen in a school. I don't even know what happened. There was a Nashville shooting at a school. What, elementary school? Huh? Elementary school? I don't know if I don't know what level of schooling, but again, it was at a it was at a school. Um mm -hmm. just kinda makes you think like again, who's these actors? Like why do they do this? You know, the same conversation over and over again. It's just like there's like no end to the mean, you know, or no means to the end. Yeah, I'm pulling it up. So, right now. Let's see. Dang, he was 28. 28 people got shot? No, he was 28 years old. Oh. That's crazy. This man's grown. A lot. <clears throat> I mean, we're never going to know. You know, we're never going to know what went on inside his head. Uh, and and you know it's that that's just it doesn't matter what that guy's thinking was what why he did it or what what prompted him to do it. There's no justification for that. You know, it, it's just like why does it happen again and again and again? 
is the question we got to answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was elementary school. Like, those kids don't deserve that. They deserve to go to a school where they feel safe and happy and they're just goddamn kids, bro. Yeah. But I mean, like, it's just tough. It's tough because, look, like, the whole world is full of injustices, which is not to say this one's undermined. But I think, like, what I have found is, like, the, the best approach is to find one and then we'll do something about it or, like, dedicate your life to learning about it and doing something about it. It's like, I mean, I was in Maryland a couple of days ago and I saw five or six young women, like, under the age of 30, completely healthy, like, homeless. And, um, uh, like, they were, you know, begging for money. Um, and I was out there. It was a beautiful day. I was, like, feeling really good. I was, like, excited for my work. And, you know, I was, like, windows rolled down, bumping music, just, like, enjoying myself. And I was, like, this is so odd because it's, like, the disparities between, you know, what people go through in life can just be so different. But that's something we know. Like, we don't need to be – I don't need to hop on the Internet to be reminded of that. Like, well, that's the problem. Why, how, why can't we get reminded of that every day? But but I but you I feel like it's not it's not for a lot of people it makes them feel something and so it's nice. It's like oh I'm I'm happy to feel guilty. I feel sad and so I feel good about myself. But it's like the number of people who actually I think do something about it is this minority because there are a lot of things that you can do. And it's not simply just like, you know, either even giving money, but I think a big part of it is actually like learning about it. And and perhaps once you come up with some ideas or opinions, share your own ideas. Maybe you're going to be the one with the idea of how to solve, you know, the, you have a new idea in the gun control debate. And perhaps that could, you know, be useful. It's just tough to, how are you going to focus on climate change, on poverty, on food crises on like natural disasters on you know immigration on refugees and there's like a billion things i mean it's not we should constantly be aware of the fact that there's injustices going on that like i feel like it's at this point if like we need to be reminded of that it's wild like is it like this shooting really reminds people like oh my god like my life is good like yeah because we're all just stuck in our day-to-day -day, bro but that's like how stuck. Like, I'm not saying stuck, but like, you know, you wake up, you're like, all right, I got to go to work. I got to figure out these things. I got to do this. Like, you know, like you're just like, again, you know, you're like a hamster in a hamster wheel trying to feed yourself at the end of the day. Maybe we do all need to take a break. Maybe you know, there's like segments of society that all need a break once, once a week, once a quarter, you know? But yeah, I mean, I, I think just in the sense of, like, how often we forget, I, I, I forget all the time, but I, I don't know, it just. Yeah, people can definitely get very stuck in the day to day. I feel like when I have a lot of work and I'm stressed about it is the days where I get stuck in the day to day. Hello? Hello? yeah but, yeah well i mean i you know even as we were having this conversation i was like this will be sick to like with all my friends whoever in my era in my life in 2024 2025 2050 just if i could do this with them once a year you know it would be cool if however long we're friends every year just throw one of these on you know it'd be kind of cool to just have it what do you mean however long we're friends bro what the fuck what i meant is however long we're alive but yeah, both. Loyal, look, one thing I also learned, you know, loyalty is really everything. You mm -hmm. know, like those cool friends and connections that you have. Like, I told you this other day, other day like, <clears throat> I miss Hawaii, bro. I miss that, you know, back and forth that we had, joking around. Like, it just felt so... It, was it just felt so natural, but at the same time, like... You know, you really, you know, people are, people are different phases. Like, they're all through seasons, you know. There's different seasons in your life. And if people can outlast all those seasons in your life, then, you know, they're, mm. they're meant to 
okay. So I I really understand the value of being meaningful friendships. Maybe not so much in the past, you know. But now and more and more I do I do like value that. Like you can't you can't put a number on that. You can't put a price tag. Hmm. Well said. I didn't think about that. Just like kind of friends who can kind of stay throughout all the tides of life can see you in different lights and see you in different stages. And that means something. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I appreciate it, Big D. Do you have any ideas on uh, the name for this? The G Shop. The G Shop, that's actually lit. Wait, but well, what is LeBron's one called? The Shop? Yeah. Okay, well, then I can call it the G Shop. Why not? This is the Shop. So? But the Shop is a lit name, though. You should watch the latest episode. It's pretty fucking good. Who's it with? I love that show. That's like one of my favorite shows. Rich Paul, <clears throat> Corday. Um, oh, nice. Steve Stout. I just love how random the people are. Yeah. I think they do they do a good job of selecting like a group of people that are gonna vibe off each other and like this one last one is really, really good. Okay, I'll check it out. Um, What are your plans this evening? I like the G shop. It's already twelve. I'm about to go to sleep. All right, well I appreciate you uh allowing me to be on this uh platform. to speak to your audience <laughs> no there's no audience bro. there's only two people listening to this me and you. <laughs> you know make sure you, I, make sure you cut some things out you know where no, it needs no, to no, it's raw bro i'm no cutting out bro what what am i supposed to cut out bro <clears throat> if you don't cut it off i'll cut your hair out no <laughs> but there's nothing to cut out bro there are some segments that <laughs> you know, will 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 impact my my which my app. One? You know which one? I don't actually know which one. The trolling one, bro. There's no bro. There's no context to that. Yeah, there is. No, there isn't. <laughs> uh, just send it to my agent, and I'll make sure my agent approves it. Okay, all right. Now, what, Rich Carter? Rich, Rich Paul. Paul. <laughs> um, All right, bro. You didn't get it's a G Shop. I'm not a fan of G Shop. You have another idea? That was a good one. Though. That was a great idea. But I just can't do G Shop because it's too close to the shop. Um, the talk shop. You like shop, huh? What are we doing here? We're like just two guys talking like it's a barbershop. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's how they came up with the shop. We're copying LeBron's idea. <laughs> no, we're not. Yeah, <laughs> we're talking like the barbershop. Why don't we call it the shop? Oh, but you got them. It's not the G shop. The mantra. The mantra? That's pretty cool. What about the mantra? That's the same thing. I'm kidding. Wait, um, what about the talk? Oh, huh? The talk. Nah, it's too, it's too basic. The gawk talk. <laughs> nah, I'm thinking the mom. But I wouldn't, you can't even say, I feel like you can't be brown and say mantra. The mantra. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm not gonna. I feel like that can't make that the podcast name. The mantra, the Stoics. Ooh, that's pretty fire. Something along those lines. Um, Stoics Cafe. Yeah, uh, this ain't no cafe. I mean, we ain't. No, what about <laughs> Stoics Cafe? The Stoics Shop. The SS. <laughs> the Stoic Shop. That's funny. The story, just put a shop on there. The deli. It's called the deli. Would that be a fire podcast in the deli? The masala. I can't, oh, but I can't, do you like the deli? Nah, it's so basic. 
Really? Yeah. I feel like there's no podcast called The Deli. I don't know. Look it up. All right, fine. I'll figure something out. But I like that. I like two of the ones you said. What was the one you said before this? The Stoic. Oh, Stoic's Cafe would be fire. Stoic shop. <laughs> That's funny enough. All right. Okay. Well, thank you, Deep. I love you. Appreciate it, brother.